In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather as a family, not of blood, but a family of faith. We gather as brothers and sisters, once again to be nourished and strengthened by the Lord, by his word, and by his own body and blood in the Eucharist. Let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have authority to forgive sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal with compassion. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are truth and love incarnate. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we, who call on you in our need, may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, so the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
on to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord.
the gospel of the Lord. And praise the Lord. Many of you will recall the shocking news from May 27, 1995, when the popular actor, Christopher Reeve, most famous for playing Superman, suffered an accident while he was horseback riding. The accident was so tragic it left him paralyzed from the neck down. Happened very quickly in one short moment, a single centimeter in the wrong direction, and he was left a quadriplegic 29 years ago. Yet after the accident, Reed was interviewed with his wife Dana by a reporter and was asked, during those times in the night when you woke up and faced reality, did you go through a major depression? Did you ever want to give up? Reed answered, no. Four days after the injury, I came to and first realized the situation. Dana and I were alone in the hospital room. This was before the operation and the doctor said I might not pull through. I remember saying to Dana that maybe it wasn't worth the trouble. Maybe we should just let me go. Without missing a beat, she looked at her husband and said, but you're still you and I love you. And that saved my life right there. That put an end to any thought of giving up. Then my three kids came in and I asked myself, how can I possibly leave them? Reeve continued, where does Superman draw his strength? From his wife and children. How often has it happened in our own families when we think about it, when we think about a crisis that we've had in our own lives, a tragedy, an illness, maybe a death, a difficult time, a difficult situation, and it's brought the family together, the family that surrounds you with love and support, even when you don't know how you can make it through, how you will go on, and they're there to believe in you and that they will always be by your side. What more can any of us ask to have that kind of support? It's really beyond measure, that kind of support of a family. The gospel today, there seems to be a bit of a crisis that's brewing in Jesus' own family. He's with his disciples and a crowd has gathered around them and the passage reads, when his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, he is out of his mind. So it's something of an extended family of Jesus that has caught some kind of news, heard some stories, and they're worried about what is going on. Maybe some of the things that Jesus had been saying caused them be concerned. Then the passage continues, his mother and his brothers arrived, standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. Jesus is told, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he says in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? He looked around at the people sitting around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. So how is it that we're to understand what is going on in this particular gospel passage? I think there are two thoughts, two different kinds of things that are going on. I think the first is a recognition that all families, all families have their problems. Jesus' extended family is trying to intervene in some situation. We don't know the whole background of it, but they're trying to intervene and into a situation where they think there's some kind of problem happening. They're wanting to insert themselves into his life, into that inner circle of Jesus' own family. Maybe they're making some assumptions about what they've heard. And we don't know, maybe their intervention or their idea of intervening was well motivated. We can't be sure. But it seems like there was some kind of tension that was brewing in the extended family that surrounded Jesus and that he has to deal with. One writer has put it this way, all families have their headaches and heartaches. All families have headaches.
headaches and heartaches. How many of you wish you could do something to change some aspect of your family life? I suppose all of us could fill in the blanks in a different way, but we realize that in all of our families there might be that kind of tension from time to time, that lack of unity, some type of discord that is going on, wishing that a mother or father would spend time with each other more than they do, or maybe wishing they would spend more time with their children, or maybe wishing children were more responsible in one way or another, that they'd make good choices, or problems of infidelity, lack of emotional connection, no clear rules for the family, toleration of behaviors that are not good, addictions of one kind or another. We realize that families aren't perfect, Families are just not perfect. They're imperfect. And that imperfection gives rise very often to some kind of tension, some kind of maybe underlying unease that exists within family life. We see it in Jesus' life. In this extended family, we don't know much about some, some kind of relations of his have come to seize him because they think he's mad. And so there's a kind of family tension problem going on. We maybe would like to know more about the specifics. We don't have them, but we do point to the reality that no, no family is perfect and there are tensions and difficulties of one kind or another that surface, sometimes periodically, sometimes it's smooth sailing for a while and something happens out of the blue. Sometimes there are long-standing tensions that we've come to live with in some way or another. And a second thought is that what Jesus does in the second part of the Gospel is to clearly, clearly redefine what makes up a family. He says it's not so much about that bloodline, about having the same DNA, but it's about mutual love and mutual respect. Mutual commitment is more important than having shared genes. Maybe we recognize this in our own lives, or maybe it's been part of our, our lifetime experience in some way. That family of choice, that family that is created. Sometimes it's made up of close friends, sometimes it's made up of neighbors, sometimes colleagues. I think maybe one of the best examples of that would be military families. People who especially are away from their biological family, they find themselves deployed or living on a base or they find themselves in, in Germany on a, on a military base. Well, a different kind of family gets created. Not one of blood, but a family of friends and neighbors and people who are united by that kind of mission that they are on. I recall that when I went to Rome to serve at the, the American seminary there, the, the North American College, uh, I didn't know anyone. I knew no one. When I arrived, I knew no one. And that kind of group of faculty, there were 16 of us American priests from different dioceses all across the United States, we, uh, we became a kind of family. And there were special events Wednesday night that we all made it a point to be at dinner. It was a special dinner on Wednesday nights. And we would celebrate all kinds of things because that was our family, our biological families, parents and siblings were all back in the United States. And so you may have had some experience like that because you had to move somewhere to a different part of the country for a time or even moving here, you realize that you can create a different kind of family. It's not a biological family, but it's one perhaps based on mutual belief, convictions, and faith. We recognize, of course, maybe the obvious that's before us as we look around, that we have gathered here tonight as a family of faith. A family, family of faith. We come united by our connection to Jesus Christ. We come not because we're related by blood, we have the same genetic composition, the same DNA. We come here because of a shared belief in Jesus Christ. And we use the language, sometimes we use it in a way that 
we don't even reflect upon. We gather as brothers and sisters united, united by a bond of mutual support. And so we come here that we might be strengthened as this family of faith, what Jesus speaks about in the gospel. We come to be strengthened by the word we hear and the, the Eucharist that we receive, strengthen the bonds of family unity among this family of faith we come to be nourished by the head of the family who is Jesus Christ. And, and we pray that united in that family, we in turn might be present to each other in good times and in bad, but in a particular way when those difficult times come our way, when we rely on the help of family, that we may receive that strength and comfort from the family that is here around us today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in God's love and confidence in His mercy, we place our needs before Him. For the Church, that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we may better discern God's will, so that we may follow it wholeheartedly and sincerely, making the kingdom increasingly present here on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders will work diligently to promote the cause of peace among war and nations, so that the dignity of all people may be protected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries at this time of year, that strengthened by the love of God, they may find joy and peace in their lives and in their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the young students of our parish who are graduating from high school, and all students who are ending the school year, that the grace of God will help them use their gifts and talents to help build a bright future for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before and who now rest in Christ, especially Rose and Charles Battaglia, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of all, help us now in our need to be healed of our weaknesses. Grant these prayers, for we offer them. In the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice stands for us may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is for our good Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we remember Charles and Rose of Italia. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. those who are not able to be with us, those at home, we pray this prayer for the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. So let me never be separated from you.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Your announcements, we thank you for your weekly contributions always. The baskets are at the doors. The bulletins are there. Tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock, our anniversary concert by our choir. Uh, it's free, open to the public. Please join us. Um, the choir generally sings at the 10.30, so sometimes if you happen to go to the 10.30, you hear them, but maybe you don't hear them, and tomorrow's the great chance you have, great opportunity. They do a wonderful job. Um, we'll have a little reception in the parish center, part of our an ongoing anniversary celebration. So 3 o'clock tomorrow, join us for the concert. Last call for the dinner dance, we need to uh, call in the number on Monday, so if you dropped it in the basket, that's fine, we'll get that, um, but the final count needs to go in. If you're kind of still a little bit on the fence, well, here's the decision day. Make up your mind. Come to the dinner dance for our 150th. Also, last chance for the progressive raffle and the painting raffle. I didn't put the table outside. It was a bit windy earlier, but it's right in the main lobby, so do that. And we put some uh, flag pins out. Flag day is the 14th, uh, so if you, you might have one at home, but if you don't, take one of those. Uh, flag day is coming up. Uh, kind of just a sign of our own patriotism, uh, our own kind of um, support for all that our country is going through. We certainly keep our country in prayer, uh, always, uh, where people of faith and we believe in prayer and we pray for our country and all of its needs. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And as we go forth, please join us in singing our recessional hymn at number 433, Canticle of the Sun. Amen. Amen. 